All right, so the um, the icon that I'm going to use is, is right here. Uh, I've got some graphics and drop shadows and stuff. This will be fine for the moment, and I can keep working on it later. Now, to start to put it into our project, we wrote the notes that we have those four different sizes. So in Photoshop, we can do several things at once. Once we've got the project finished, we can save it and export it as the different sizes and put them in the right place. The right place is going to be the folder where those icons are at. Those icons are are in are in that folder. So we, we can do a couple of things. We can put our icons in the right folder and then change the code to point to those icons. Or we can leave the code alone and replace the icons that are already there. And I think that's a lot better because we're just going to replace the Cordova icons that are already there with our own icons and then the code will already say look in this folder and grab this icon so we won't have to change our code. We can do that all through Photoshop. So let's say whatever project you've got here, go ahead and just do a f one more file save. Do a plain old regular save at this point. And then uh, we're going to um, uh, export this as, a, uh, as the right kind of graphic. Right now our project, uh, mine is icon.psd, and the right kind of graphic are pings, or PNGs. So we need to resize these graphics to the right size, we need to save them as the right format, and the right file name. We can do that all in one swoop here. Fi let's go to File, Export, Save for Web. There's several ways to do this, and if you know other ways, you can, you're can. you free to do those ways too, but I think this is a pretty straightforward way for beginners. So file, export, save for web. This pops up with a screen where you can then do a variety of, of, of effects to uh, optimize the graphic and such, and I'll put it in the notes in a moment. Uh, but what we want to start off with first on the top right corner, we want a preset right here of ping 24, PNG 24. So on the notes here, so you start with that size, then design a graphic. When done, file, export, save for web. Set the preset to ping 24. Make sure transparency is on. On that screen, you see right there transparency should be checked on. And the preview will show that there is a transparent background. If transparency is not on, what will happen is you're going to get a white background behind your graphic. And so therefore, when it's on the person's device, it'll look amateurish. Because you're going to have a white background behind your icon, and you never see that on, on like professional icons. So make sure transparency is turned on. It automatically should turn itself on when you select the preset, ping 24. You'll see there the checkerboard. All this other stuff about interlace, color profile, don't worry about that. Convert, don't worry. Here's what you need to care about. Image size. Right now this is much too large for our project. On the notes, we have the largest size as 96 pixels. So under image size, type 96, and then press Tab so that it shows you the, the preview size change over there not enter. You want to type the number, then press tab. You see how it shrinks down? This is going to be the 96 pixel size. It's 18% of the original size. 96 pixels, ping 24, transparent. So set transparency is on. Set your size, like 96 by 96. Press tab. Then press uh, C 
save dot dot save dot 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 right there. Press save. When you press that save button down there, it will ask you where would you like to save this graphic? And here's our trick. We can save this exactly in the folder that it needs to be, and then we can replace the original graphic. So you have to find in this window your flash drive where your project is at. Right, you've got your drop down button, go to your flash drive. You have to find your project folder. You open up the project folder, you open up the res folder, the icons folder, Android folder, then click one time on the icon 96. What it'll do is it'll copy the name of the icon and put it into your file name that you're about to save. When you click Save, it'll pop up. Are you sure you want to replace the one that's currently there? Yes. The one that's currently there is still the Cordova mascot graphic. So here I'm saying, yes, I want to replace the existing graphic. And then when I look in my folder here, well, there's one down, three more to go. Those original graphics that were just there as a placeholder, I've started to put my versions. Let's do it again for the next one. It'll be the exact same process. I've got my graphic, file, export, save for web. It should remember ping 24 transparency but if it doesn't you can always select the preset again it should do it the next level down we already did 96 by 96 what's the next size 72, 72. so you type 72 you press tab <coughs> and then it shrinks it down 72 pixels is there 14 percent save It should have remembered your folder from a moment ago. I went into the, I went into my flash drive, CBDB project, CBDB res, icons, Android. Should have remembered that. And now I'm going to select, I'm going to click one time the icon 72 so that it copies the name to the file name I'm about to save. <coughs> No need to type it yourself. Just click on the name of the file and it'll grab it for you. Click Save and then you confirm, yes, I want to replace the old graphic. And now in the folder, I've got my second one done. So on your own, try to do the next two right here, then we'll go on. If you didn't quite get it, call me over, but try to do the next two, replace those two, and then we'll go on. So it's the same process for the other sizes, 48 by 48, 
save. I'm going to click to replace icon 48. Confirm. Then I'll go back to save for web again, and this time finish with 36. Now here's a pro tip, something to think about. You don't have to worry about it right now, but think about this. When it's at 96 DPI, or when it's at 96 by 96, no, it's larger, you can see it well. When I shrink it down to the smallest size, now it's 7% of my original size. When it's this small, there are some people's icons that that small is very hard to read. So here's a little bit of extra design. I know that my 36 by 36 will be that small, so maybe what I'm going to do, I'm going to design another version of my icon before I get to that point, and it's only going to be um, the icon with just the letter C. Because I know that at the smallest size of all, I'm barely going to be able to see anything. So when I go down to 36, that's more readable. That's obviously more work, more effort, but and more thought. But think about that. When you go down to those smaller sizes of 36 and 48, you might need to design a simpler version of your icon. Whereas at 72 and 96, and whatever the next higher size would be, your originally designed graphic might be good enough, because it's larger. So I'll just put it in the notes, but that's not required for the grade and such. Set your size, click Save, find the project cbd find the folder project cbdb res icons android and click one at a time on the name of the graphic to be replaced click save and confirm the replacement Pro tip. At 36 by 36 and 48 by 48, you may need to design a version of your icon that is simpler because it's so small. You'll, you won't have as much space for detail. So let's say I don't get that fancy at the moment. I'm going to use that, that one. So if I look in my folder, I've got all of them like that. If you want to see the different, um, if you don't see previews, this is still Windows 7, but uh, if you don't see previews like me, you could go up to the icon right there, more options, and pre preview them in different sizes, large, medium, extra large. So I replaced. I replaced their icons with my icon. I didn't have to change the underlying code. The code in the project will just look for, in that folder, these things with these names. So when we compile or run the project, it'll go look for those graphics and then uh, show you the, um, the latest version. So to see this result, what I would say is, if, especially if you're using your own device, what I would say is, on your own device, once in a while, go in and delete the old version. It should automatically compile the new version onto the device, but for sometimes it's useful to do that. And you should be able to tap and hold and drag to the uninstall icon. Even if you're using one of our devices, I give you permission to delete someone else's app. Uh, but you know they're going to delete your app if they get your tablet, so be careful. Uh, so yeah, delete the old version of the app. 
just to be sure, because sometimes when you've got the old version hanging around, it doesn't update itself. So tap and hold, drag to the trash. And next, I'm going to get back into Visual Studio and do a run. So I'm cleaning up some of these on my own device. Go ahead and go back to Visual Studio and then run your project. Run your project with these new graphics and then exit the app and go look at your list of all installed apps and you should see your icon installed there. device and see if you get your own icon and then just call me over so I can take a quick look at it. I want to see people's icons. Have your icon on your device to show up. Anyone else got your icon to show up?
just in Europe. It's a fantastic check of the year. It's a good time. Okay, so that's one of the two graphics we'll be covering today. So one of them is setting the, the icons uh, for, the, um, for the project like this. The other one is the splash screen. Um, we'll do the splash screen in a moment, but this is, this is what always is, causes a little bit of an issue when we do the splash screen. The splash screen is going to be very similar in that we're going to replace the ones that are already there. But we also ha have to activate the splash screen plugin in the project. So let's do that before we, we leave Visual Studio for a moment. Um, your plugins, remember, are in the config XML file. So by default, the project does not have the feature to show splash screens. So even if we added your splash screen to the correct folder, they would be ignored. So let's double click config XML. Let's go to plugins and find the plugin called splash screen. This gives us the ability to add the splash screen and the project will actually use it. If this is not on, even though you design an amazing splash screen, it's going to get ignored. So when you find it there under plugins, splash screen, click add. So uh, I've added the splash screen plugin, and then now I can go back to Photoshop and start to design a, a splash screen. And I'll give you some tips on that one. So uh, I'm going to save my config XML file, and then back to Photoshop. Depending how you designed your icon, you can use it as a starting point for your splash screen. So uh, I'll show you how to start with your icon first. Uh, let's go up to the image menu and select duplicate. We're going to duplicate our current project. I, I like the colors or the, or the effects or whatever and I'm going to use that as a starting point for my splash screen. So image duplicate. It pops up. What would you like to name it? Let's call this splash. So our, our, our one version is our icon, and one version is our splash screen. So click OK. Now at the top here, I have a tab where I've got my icon PSD project, and an icon where I've got my splash project, which has not been saved yet. So I want to do File Save As. You do save and save as as you work on your PSD project as your work in progress project. And you eventually do export when it's the final version. But for the moment, file save as. And I'm going to save this in the same folder that I had my icon, PSD. Again, this is not the final version, so I'm not doing export. I'm doing a regular save. So I'm saving this into my project, and it's going to be called splash.psd. So I'll click Save. It 
just click OK on the on the compatibility and at the top it shows icon PSD and splash PSD so I made a list of the different sizes of my splash screen and the largest size was 720 by 960 so again I want to make a graphic that's larger to kind of future-proof it. Um, this project right now is 512 by 512. I want to give us more space to work with the splash screen. So let's go up to Image Menu, Canvas Size. We have Image Size and Canvas Size. Image Size would stretch what is currently there which might lose quality. Like I said, if you start with a smaller size and stretch it to a bigger size, it might lose quality. Um, instead, we're doing canvas size. So we're starting with a really small graphic, but then we're adding to it along the edges. So let's do image, canvas size, change this to pixels. And I had here 720 by 960. Well, I actually want a larger size than this just in case to deal with uh, the different sizes of my of my uh, possible future devices. So actually what I want here is 1080 by 1920. So I'm starting off with this small graphic and I'm adding to it more edges. So that's saying you started with a certain size and you're adding more around it. What you could add to it is any amount of extra space. So I'll click OK. And then double click the hand icon to zoom out. Uh, double click that hand icon. Now this is the complete graphic of the splash screen. And depending on what you designed, you may be able to do some sort of like free transform, you know, edit free transform, um, usually using shapes. Shapes and fonts usually is OK to resize. When you draw something with the brush tool, that's the one that if you try to resize, that's the one that's going to lose quality. But shapes and text, those uh, are usually in a different format called vector graphics, which don't lose quality if you resize. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting with this small graphic, and what you could do is go to Edit Free Transform and see about increasing the size. For the splash screen, probably you'll think about resizing or designing things differently than your icon. I, I don't like this at all. Uh, it looks great as a uh, icon, but as a splash screen, I think I'm just going to start over. I have now a bigger canvas to work with. I have this vertical size to work with for a splash screen. And the splash screen is what you're going to see um, as sort of a preview before your app loads up. Uh, you've got uh, your app that's going to load eventually, and before that, you're going to see a graphic. So you have plenty of space then for some text and, and graphics. So let me give you a few minutes, maybe like 10 minutes or so. Think about something to make as a graphic here, and we're, we're, we're going to need to do the export like before, which we'll do together in a little bit. But let me give you like 10 minutes. Try to play with to create something for a splash screen within the confines of these dimensions, and then we'll go on. Yes. Thank you. 
can see the whole size. And if you want to resize your uh, the right layer, good. And then go to edit and transform. And you grab these corners, drag the corner out, and that's going to resize. But I think the big idea was just to see it all like me. You just need to double click the hand, and that zooms you out completely. Cancel. It already zoomed you out, so you don't have to double click it again. You already did it. And then when you like the size of it, then you can put check mark to the two. The first thing you want to do is change it from inches to inches. So you your size is going to be 10, 80, 20. This is machine for the
All right, everyone, let's say I'm going to move on. Let's say I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to set up my splash screen. Now, um, in the notes, what we're going to do regarding the uh, splash screen is going to be very similar to what we did with the icon, but there's going to be one difference. The, um, the item here where it says transparency is on, we won't use transparency for the splash screen. Uh, if we have transparency, you'll get a very weird result where your spra splash screen loads up and you'll actually see through it. You're going to see the app behind it instead of it covering the app. So uh, let's do the same sort of steps here. Um, I've got my project file. Uh, just do a save, regular save first. Then we'll export save for web. Preset is ping 24, but then turn off transparency. And what will happen here is uh, you'll get a, uh, a white background. And if you don't want a white background, here we've got matte, defines the color blend transparency. So we've got um, white, we've got black. If we don't want those colors, we have other. So we do need some sort of color in the background. <coughs> Transparency 
transparency won't work. And here we go, I crashed Photoshop. Send crash report. Fix it. <laughs> So that, that's probably my problem here. I had Visual Studio running. I should have closed it. But we're, we're going to go on the right track here. So um, if yours is working, great. Uh, so I'm going to exit Visual Studio. Um, I'll go back to Photoshop. I wrote down those dimensions. I wrote down those dimensions and I'm going to use them. But depending on the size that we're working with, the proportions might not be the same as this one we're designing. So we're going to need to turn off the proportion lock. So as soon as this starts up again, I'll show you what I mean. For web, no transparency. The largest size that I'm going to work with right now is 720 by 960. Oh, but what happens is I change 720 and it automatically becomes 1280. And then I change 960 and it becomes 540. That's like musical chairs. So Right now they're locked in a proportion. There's a little chain right here. Click to toggle retain original proportions. So turn off that chain, break that chain, and then you'll be able to write 720 by 960. So that's, uh, that's been resized from the original 1920 by 1080. I'll click Save. And you need to go back up to your Screens folder in the Project folder. Screens Android, and I'm currently working with XHDPI portrait. So that's the one I'm going to replace. There's those landscape ones that we can ignore. But this is the extra high DPI. So I'll click to select it and save it. I'll confirm that I'm replacing. If you're curious, looking in the project folder, Res screens Android, viewing icons. So I've got one replaced. I'll need to do that with the other three portrait ones. So once again, I can go back to save for web. And there's actually a keyboard shortcut. Control, Alt, Shift, S. So you probably know Control, S to save. Control Alt Shift S will will do the save for web very quickly. And you can actually do that with one hand because you can fit your fingers on Alt Control Shift S probably with a little practice. So ping 24, no transparency. You'll probably need to turn off the lock. And then we've got 480 by 640. on the notes for the splash screen. Same as above. 
except transparency off you can set a matte color if you want besides white turn off the link chain then size as necessary find the folder project cbdb res screens android and click one at a time on the name of the graphic to replace. Click save and confirm. I can also write before you create your splash screens. Be sure to add the splash screen plugin. in the config XML file first. So uh, those sizes, okay, I'm going to do the 480 by 640. You might have already done them. That's the um, high DPI portrait. Then I'm doing uh, 320 by 470. Which is medium DPI. DPI is 320 by 426. Three twenty by four twenty six. sizes, you can go back to Visual Studio, run your project, and then see your splash screen as your app loads up. Yes? This splash screen will only load up on the initial opening of the app, correct? Mm -hmm. So the very first time the app loads up, it needs to load into memory, and then this will happen. If you want to test it in the future times, uh, most likely you'll have to you know, quit the app to get it out of memory, and then load it again, and then it'll display the splash again. So I've got my graphics in the right place. I'm going to close Photoshop because in my case, Looks like I can't run Visual Studio and Photoshop at once. 
So I'm going to load my project in Visual Studio. This is one of the ways where definitely if you try to run this on the simulator, you don't really get anything. The web browser simulator is not very good to test this aspect, as well as the icons. So this is the example where you do want to use a device to see that. And um, I'm going to run mine. And it depends also, um, various factors happen. It depends on how long the splash screen will last. Um, how you know the capabilities of the device if the um, if the splash screen lasts for a little bit of time or a long time okay, let's see if mine right here it's loading up one two three it took like three seconds or so to load up we're gonna add one little bit of code to make it even more optimized uh, but at the very least my splash screen loaded up for a moment there's a little spinning happening and then the project loaded up. If I want to continue to test this a few times, what I was saying was, you know, if I if I click the home button to leave the app and then I try to run the app again, it's not going to run the splash screen again because it's in memory. On Android, I can click the button to show me all open apps and then close the app, you know, manually close these out of memory like that. And then when I when they're all closed out of memory, then when I run it again, it should load it into memory one more time. So I run it again, there's a splash screen again. So you have to close it out of memory. You have to force quit it to show the splash screen every time. Well, designing the graphic and putting the graphic in the right place is one thing then adding the plugin is the other thing and then the third thing that I would recommend we're gonna add a little piece of code here and then we'll have the splash screen fully set up the splash screen takes a little more effort than the icons you just drop those icons in the right place and they work the splash screen takes the plugin the design and one more piece of code let's get into Visual Studio and let's open your JavaScript file <coughs> index.js index.js line 18 or so we have console log Cordova is ready well part of the purpose of the splash screen is sort of like to hide the app while things load into memory we don't want a person to try to click stuff before Cordova has fully loaded into the memory. So the splash screen appears there for them to look at something while, it, while the system is loading up, and then we can use the device. So we have console output that tells us that Cordova is ready, but that's not for the user. We want the person using the device to know that things are ready. That's when the splash screen goes away. On some people's devices, it takes one second for the splash screen to go away. On others, it takes five seconds or different amounts. Well, whatever the amount is going to be will be determined right here. Let's make a new line right after Cordova is ready. We'll write navigator dot splash screen. dot hide semicolon our note show the splash screen some amount of time based on the device then hide it after the Cordova code or the Cordova framework or library loads into memory. 
So now it's up to the device to automatically hide it as necessary. I think the default is like five seconds. Show the splash screen for five seconds. But some devices don't need that much time. Some devices need one second to load into memory. And some devices need even longer time. So after device is ready, up here, on device ready function runs, it processes this, and then it eventually gets here, Cordova is ready, and it will then hide the splash screen object attached to the navigator, the, the app. So this bit of code, you can get it obviously from cordova.apache.org, back at the documentation of the Cordova project, you can go read the splash screen documentation to tell you how it fully works and setting a timeout and all of that. And if we have a dot hide, we also have a dot show. We can show a splash screen when we want. Usually you want it as soon as the app loads up. Now we're saying here, after the appropriate amount of time based on the device, hide the splash screen, we're done, we're done seeing it. You can save and, and, and run your project and see if you notice any difference from a moment ago. I was trying to count it off. One, two, three. It looked like it was taking about three seconds. I'm going to try it again and see if it goes a little faster now that I've optimized it a bit. Okay, I got up to approximately two seconds that time. So instead of it taking the three seconds or so last time, it loaded up a little faster because it loaded up as fast as it needed simply by adding this code of you hide the splash screen as soon as you need to, as soon as it's loaded into memory. So now there's something there that appears before my app is up as a sort of like, uh, just wait a moment, the app is loading, the app has loaded, and I'm ready to start using it. And then when I go look at my app icons, I see the icon there, and that looks nice. So for today, I wanted to focus on this, some of this basic structural stuff. App icon, splash screen, adding the plugin of splash screen, and adding a little bit of optimization for the splash screen hiding. Uh, when we come back on Tuesday, then we'll start to do the coding for the save comic. Uh, we're finally going to get that to work, and we're going to start to talk about the database that we're going to use in the class. I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again if you want to start to preview it a bit over the weekend. It's this database called PouchDB. It's a JavaScript-based database. It doesn't run on, a, on any particular special server or anything. It runs right off of the device. It's very robust in that it can then be replicated to a server so that you can transfer the data from one device to another. But you can start to preview that over the weekend if you want, and then we'll start to use it starting on Tuesday. Um, and that's what's coming up in the project. This is going to then take us uh, the next two weeks or so, uh, setting up the saving to the database and retrieving and all of that. That lecture starts on Tuesday. As for today, it was more of a day of graphics and uh, being a little artistic, perhaps, and realizing you're not as artistic as you thought, maybe, unfortunately. But that's OK. None of us are, usually. A lot of us that take these programming classes were not artistic, because the programming aspect is what we excel at. But if you're able to do both, that's even better. Because if you're able to program it and make the code work, you're also going to need to be able to make the graphics work. If you are your own app developer, if you're the only one on the team, well, it makes sense. You're going to need to program it and design it graphically and market it and everything. So in this class, we're also going to touch on social media. On the last part of the class, we've made an amazing app. No one's downloading it. 
Well, no one knows it exists because we need to do a little bit of marketing. So we're going to also cover a little bit of social media to promote ourselves or the app. So this class in three months we cover a lot, and even if, even if, and even in all the three months, there's still more to cover because it's such a huge topic. But I think we'll cover a lot of great things in the class of three months. Questions on what we talked about today? So we're going to uh, end the lecture at this point. We'll have some lab time until 9.30. You can work on further refining these graphics if you want, or if you think it's good at the moment. OK, great. We'll have some lab time until 9.30. Um, I'm going to put a copy of my code into the folder up to this point if you want it. And we'll uh, pick it up again on Tuesday.